Okay, then chapter three is all about data modeling using ER diagram. Okay, then so this is about chapter three on entity relationship diagram. So what is this ent entity relationship diagram? Do you remember in chapter one and two, I used to say catalog, schema, uh, what else, metadata. I used to say something, is it? So the representation of representation of that schema will be in a pictorial form i mean to say diagrammatic form that is your er model in last class some of you you asked about conceptual model if i'm not mistaken conceptual schema conceptual model so that conceptual model is the design of schema okay so mean to say the conceptual model is the catalog. It shows the catalog of the database. Okay, let's say you plan to design a university database. Before you design a database, you collect the requirement and then you start to design it. Design. Design means what? You just frame it. What is the tables? What are the data items? What are the types? Uh, you know, etc. Conditions and then structure, possible values. You just find out. And design that designing part is the conceptual design and the outcome of the conceptual design is the conceptual model you, you get the idea everybody so that's the one we are going to design sorry study in this chapter conceptual model which is i mean one example well, one diagram we are going to use for the conceptual model is er diagram okay so somebody else may use another diagram like a UML diagram you might have heard or you will study UML diagram in software engineering codes. Okay. So now we are going to use entity relationship diagram. Okay. Fine. So keep it in mind. You might have studied like external model uh, and then uh, conceptual and then internal so internal related to the storage, conceptual related to the schema, I mean to say the catalog and external is the user interface. Okay, fine. So this conceptual schema is the one we are going to discuss now. We are going to represent the conceptual schema that is the catalog in terms of a diagram. What is the name of the diagram? Entity relationship diagram. Okay. So the outcome of this conceptual schema is the model, entity relationship model diagram. Okay, that is the outcome. Okay, I already mentioned in one of the classes, maybe last class, I told you, when you are writing a, a software, let's say you are, you are in a software developing team, you are going to write a software, you won't start write the software in day one. First, you collect the requirement, then you design and then you develop so this design is the er diagram okay so let's see what are we going to discuss in this chapter so these are the topics we are going to see what is um uh, is it loaded wait a second So this is the outline. Can you all able to see the outline topics that we are going to study? Ah, yes. Okay. That's good. That's good. So what are we going to see? Some basic concepts. For example, what is what do you mean by entity? What do you mean by attribute? What do you mean by relationship? With an example of company database. You know, last chapter we used to take university database. It contains many tables, student table, course table, section table. This chapter, we are going to consider company database. In a company, what are the tables you are going to have? Like, like uh, employee table, project table, department table, all those things. And the relationship between those things. The relationship between the employee and the department, employee and the project, and the department and the project. So all those things. Okay, then and the notations for the year diagram how are you going to draw the diagram we need, we need to use symbols symbols so what are the notations and then we will try to draw one diagram for the company database and then we will see some other types of relationship that's it this is the outline 
So now, let's see. The main activities, when you're talking about database design, actually I have a diagram. Let's me, let me go to the diagram. So actually this is the database design process. When you see the database design process, uh, can you see the steps? You, you need to start from the right side, from here. Okay. Uh, mini world. Mini world is the part of your database. Okay, fine. Ignore it. Can you see the square? You need to concentrate on the square. First of all, requirements, collection, and analysis. I told you already. When you are going to design a database for a company, you won't start to design it in MySQL or Oracle. No, no, no. First, you need to talk to the end users, talk to the admin, talk to the students, talk to the company employees, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Collect their requirements. Collect what do they want? What are they using? What are the tables that currently they are using? So all those details you collect. That is called requirements collection. What do they want means what is their requirement, requirement collection. After that only you do the conceptual design. Can you see here conceptual design? Here, based on the requirements, you design the database. Maybe how do you design? You draw the diagrams. Okay. ER diagram of your database so that you can able to understand. When you draw a diagram, you can visualize. Can you get the idea? When you have a paragraph, you can understand. When you put it in a diagram, you will understand very easily. So, so put the requirements in a diagram. Example, ER diagram. At the same time, in case you are doing an application, you need to identify the functionalities for the application. Let's say if it is an educate, what is the functionality of educate? So you need to enroll, drop the course, withdraw course, calculate GPA, etc., etc., generate reports. Can you get the idea? Uh, make the attendance and then warnings if the student absent for many hours, I don't know, certain number of hours, and then warning and then denied. So there are many functions. So when you are doing, the, when the database designer doing the conceptual design, system designer will do the functional uh, design and functional analysis. Okay, so this side is done by the database designers, database developer. This, sir, this, the left hand side, you see the left hand side. This left hand side is by the application designer application developer you get my point using java maybe or using j developer for oracle or using power builder okay so whatever is it can you get the idea so this side by the database designer and developer this side by the application designer here here an application developer okay here okay fine so after conceptual design, next, next step here is logical design. So what is your logical design? Here in logical design, you will use DBMS, one example, MySQL or Oracle or Sybase, whatever. You use DBMS to design your database. You create the, create the tables. Can you get the idea? You create the tables, you create whatever, put the constraints. So set up your tables. So that is your logical design. Okay, then. Then comes your physical design. When you're talking about physical design, it talks about the access path, file structure, organization of database in the medium, you know, storage medium. How are you going to store in the storage medium? So those are done by the physical design. Okay, then. So this is by the database designer and developer. And here comes, can you see that functional? You will, you will find out the functional requirements. And afterwards, you design the application program and then implementation. Okay, fine. So this is by the uh, application designer and developer. So our concentration is here. Collect the requirement. Then proceed with the conceptual schema, proceed with the logical design, and then the physical design. Okay, fine. This is what it's mentioned in the previous diagram. 
So there are two main activities, one by the database designer and one by the application designer. But we are going to talk about database designer. You will talk about this application designer. You will study it in software engineering course. Our course doesn't talk about application. Ah, university database. Mini world is um, employee, department, projects, dependents, um, etc. etc. That is the mini world. Okay, then. Mini world is part of the database. Okay, fine. So, here the, the two main activities database design, application design. As I mentioned, we are going to discuss only database design. You will study the application design in another course, software engineering course. So, our chapter, this chapter 3 is about conceptual database design okay then so what are we going to do we are going to design the conceptual schema for the database okay conceptual schema that is the catalog in terms of a diagram it's a catalog you will know the table name the relation name okay and then you will know the items data items you will know that data type um, everything, everything and some other constraints. You will come to know those constraints from the diagram and the relationship between the tables. All you can understand from the diagram, ER diagram. Okay, then. Ah, see, this is what I was telling. Do you remember I told you you will study it in another course, this application design, another course name, software engineering course. Okay, fine. So it doesn't matter. So, here the mini world, this is a collection of mini world. Collection of mini world is here in the uh, company database, you will have employee, department, dependent, projects, etc, etc. So, our concentration is on the right hand side. And now chapter 3 is here, here, this part. How to do the logical design? Next chapter. Okay, we will we'll do it in the next chapter. Okay, then, so this chapter, what are we going to start? I mean, with, what are we going to uh, study? Entity relationship diagram. Oh, chapter 4 is again entity relationship diagram, but with some features. It's called enhanced entity relationship diagram. Okay. And uh, do you remember I told you it's not one and only ER diagram. We still have other models. One example is UML, UML diagram. UML diagram is very useful when you are dealing with object oriented database design. Okay, fine. But we are dealing with relational database. So, we will stick with the entity relationship diagram. So, this model goes to the relational DBMS. ER model goes with the relational database. Uh, database. And then uh, UML goes with the object oriented uh, DBMS. Okay, fine. Now, let's see the company database. Let's have a quick idea about company database. Uh, so, these are the requirements for the company database. A company is organized into departments. So, you have department tables. Each department, it has some, some fields. What are the data items? Every department has a name, number, and then the manager. Every department has a manager. Um, and the department may have some locations and we need to keep track of the start date of the manager. What does it mean? Manager is not manager forever. Okay, maybe they are the manager of the department for two years and then another new manager will join. Do you get my point? So, start date of the manager means when he starts to manage the department. That's the meaning. Okay, you get the idea, start date of the manager. When he starts to manage the department, fine. Because don't think that there is a manager from the beginning until the, no, 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 no. No, none of the company has this policy. They normally keep the manager for certain number of years. Then they will assign another new manager. Okay. And each department controls a number of projects. So project, another 
entity another table so each project has a name unique number and then location oh can you see this the term unique last class i told you already key storage value or key assigned value do you remember each record is assigned with the key yeah so that key is unique it's easy to retrieve the elements with the key you you can easily retrieve because it's unique no two record shares so each project has a unique name unique number okay similarly company has a name and number is it this name is also a unique name unique number if there is a number it will be a unique number you may not have a company with two departments with the same name marketing department another marketing no 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 is it do you remember a company if, you, if it has a name name will be different 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 is it marketing department sales department accounting department hr so the name of the company sorry sorry name of the department in the company normally it's unique obviously if there is a number for each department it's going to be unique even the project has a name will be unique keep it in mind okay no two projects will have the same name because normally we call projects we refer the department by the name not by the number there is a number but usually how do we refer uh, department hr we, i don't say the department 101 no 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 it's a confusion what does it number 101 represent which in which department we, so normally name is the entity refers the department so it's obviously unique so for a company database what are the constructs we have tables maybe department table project table ah, another example another table a company database may have employee table employee so what are the uh, attributes uh, social security number address salary gender birth date okay ah social security number it's unique okay what is the social so in, in america they used to call social security number uh, because uh, we are using a book written by the american author so that's what he used the word social security number but generally you can say national id okay then so each employee works for one department but works for many projects what does it mean i for example let's look at me i am an employee of jic i work under computer science department is it so normally an employee works under only one department i can't work under this and that department no 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 but the employee will work under many projects that's possible okay so the db database will keep track of the number of hours per work that the employee spent on each project so i am working on many project means how many hours i spent in project 1 project 2 project 3 it's all recorded so that i need to be compensated there is money for the project work is it and then they need to keep track of the direct supervisor of the employee like manager of kavita can you get the idea direct employee another construct construct means table we may have it in the company database is dependent what do you mean by dependent is the family member okay then so that is the meaning of dependent family member of the employee okay dependent of employee so we need to maintain a table the table contains the details of the dependents okay fine so what is the what is the data we are going to record name of the dependent gender of the dependent male or female and then the birth date and then the relationship maybe uh, wife daughter son husband mother father okay that kind of relationship okay fine so these are so oh, let's let's summarize let's consider you are going to con consider the company database so what are the tables you are going to construct inside is Depart uh, department 
table, project table, employee table, dependent table. Okay. Now let's consider some of the main concepts. We are going to draw entity relationship diagram. So you need to know some basic idea of entity relationship diagram. Basic idea. What do you mean by basic idea? I say entity relationship diagram. Diagram you know already. It's a diagram. Entity relationship. What do you mean by entity and what do you mean by relationship? We need to know the definition. Okay. Entity means some item, object. It can be a thing. That is an entity in the mini world. Okay then. What are you going to represent in the database? That is entity. Okay fine. So just now a few minutes ago, uh, I was talking about employee, department, project, uh, what else? Dependent. So those are all entities of the company database. Okay. Uh, don't say individual. That will come under entity set. Okay. That will come under another topic. Uh, after two, three slides, I will go. Like, like Kovita is an, it's, it's a part of the entity set. Set. Okay. That, that I will come back after a while. Now we categorize one example of that. You know in Java you, you studied classes and objects. You create a class. Class is a blueprint. And then you create an object. Let's say you create an employee class. And then you create object. Kavita, John, Smith, Jim. So those are the objects. Okay. The instance. Instance. But what is your class? Class is an employee. Something like that. Entity is something like a class. You get my point? It can be an uh, item, it can be an object, it can be a thing, whatever, it's all same. Okay. So now, for here there is an example given here. Employee is an entity, department is an entity, project is an entity. Okay. Like a table. Yeah. Item in the table is, a, is the entity set. It comes under this set. Okay. I'm talking about the table itself. Employee. It's an entity. Just employee. Don't go to the example. Employee is an entity. Okay then. Item. Sorry, not item. A department. Project, etc., etc. And now entity relationships. Entity means you know already. It can be an object. It can be a thing. It can be an item. Okay, fine. Relationship. Before going to relationship, we need to know another terms, uh, terminology which is attribute. What do you mean by attribute? Property is used to describe the entity. For example, if it is a student, how do you represent student? ID number, ah, columns, super. ID number, name, date of birth, grade, GPA, department, major. Those are the properties used to describe the entity. Super, the columns, okay, fine. A specific entity will have a value for each of its attributes. Ah, this is what few of you, you were talking about. Like, like you gave John Smith, for example. John Smith is a specific entity. Okay, then specific entity will have a value for each attribute. John Smith is the name. Maybe one, two, three is the number. Uh, maybe something is the address. And something is the uh, John Smith is a male. That is the gender. And then birth date. He will have values for the attributes. Specific entity. That is John Smith is the specific entity. Fine. Okay then. Now you now know the what do you mean by entity? Uh, what do you mean by specific entity? Okay fine. And then what do you mean by attributes? Okay fine. Uh, when you are talking about attribute, do you remember attribute means like student ID number, name, GPA, major, etc. There is a data type for each attribute, is it? Name can be only alphabet, no numbers, no special characters. 
and number has to be numeric and then gpa has to be double its number double okay double means floating point number something like that you have some data types is it that is called uh, that is called um, wait a minute value set here it is written value set okay uh, by the way when we do practical uh, maybe after i finish the chapter for sql i will start practical during the time we will discuss the data type if you are not entering the proper data value like name has to be sorry id number has to be a number instead of number you are writing a b c d it will give you error messages okay we will see those things if you don't follow the uh, data type you will keep on getting the error messages you won't be able to insert the value keep it in mind okay that we will see it in the practical class so this is about what do you mean by entity what do you mean by attribute okay fine and now attribute when i say attribute attribute can be of many types okay by the way i need to say one thing um this is this is a uh, slide i always say slide don't rely on this slide because slide will have some details very brief maybe not even the details okay so what is the meaning is the slide what is have what it has like types of attributes and then i listed like simple composite multi value uh, next slide and then and then multi valued composite multi value i'm talking about composite and multi value and then i go to another topic am i right actually truly speaking in the textbook there are many types so so wait a minute you need to open the textbook you need to uh, what do you mean by that uh, study the different types from the textbook so the first one first type is simple and or versus so this is okay you can't able to see now i don't know why i think now you can able to see if i'm not mistaken so this is one type yeah second type okay but in the slide it's not written there don't blame the slide um because i always say do not follow the slide open the textbook so this is another type and then we have uh, some more type just give me a minute i plan to edit the slide but i already uploaded i said yeah you can able to Mm. No doubt, you can able to note down. Ah, okay. This is the uh, we have to erase it. I don't know. Ah, yeah, here it is. yeah so there is no fora um i think uh, give me a minute yeah so these are the three types basically speaking of attributes i'm talking about attributes 
so in the slide it's it's written uh, something like simple attribute composite attribute multi valued attribute no 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 it's 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 not only those types why i'm i'm stressing on this in the entity relationship diagram i'm going to use the derived type uh, yeah most of the time single value type uh, simple composite stored also we are going to use so that's what i want to say all those types so what are the types simple versus composite attribute okay then single valued uh, it's valued not values single valued versus uh, multi valued attribute and then stored versus derived attribute okay so these are the types of attributes okay what does it mean simple composite for example let me give you an example i have a table uh, in in case that if i have a um, uh, for example last class we saw many tables is it uh, so this is not a table but anyway a student table so uh, here the column is for id number and the next two column is for the name for example and the next two column here address address okay uh, so this is the address oh sorry i can't able to write okay the last two column is address id number for example let's look into one student id number is something 1111 whatever and the name is for example john and then address when you are writing address how do you write the address you need to uh, you need to write this door number and then street number maybe street name and then city and then zip code and then country do you remember so you will be writing many details so your address is a composite attribute composite means collection of sub attributes what do you mean by collection of collection of street number street name door number city name country name zip code i mean this is the minimum i am telling so it can have more than that i don't know okay then so address is a composite attribute it contains many other details is it understandable composite and here name when i say name um, it's just a name is it but some people even see name as a composite any guess name can be a composite attribute how why any guess mm -hmm. super first name middle name last name initials do you see that so name can be composite but id number it's not necessarily ah i will come to complex after a while it is complex but uh, let me finish the type and then i will come to complex attribute okay fine so composite means you you understand the meaning it's divided into smaller sub parts so this address is a composite attribute it can be divided into smaller sub part that is composite so name can be divided into maybe three sub part first name middle name last name maybe four initials whatever okay simple attribute means it has only one value single value okay like simple way it's like for example um it can't be divided id number you can't able to divide into smaller sub part id number is just id number no division okay so that is simple composite mean you can divide into smaller sub parts so the first one is over simple uh, which one can be divided uh, on single value i uh, no 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 uh, here you don't mix up i can understand what you mean by simple and single but it's different if the attribute value can be divided means it's composite cannot be divided into smaller sub part simple simple composite division division now move on to the single value multi valued attribute single valued multi valued what do you mean for example 
if if uh, just consider one example multi-valued okay uh, one example given in the textbook for example let's consider the table car when you're considering the car the model of the car okay the, the model like uh, i don't know uh, maybe hyundai or honda something like that it's only one value is it a bmw okay only one is it just this is the model one car will have this model okay then maybe toyota that's it that is single value it has only one value okay fine multi-valued means it can have more than one value for example let's take it into the consideration color of the car some car will have one value like white color car so color is white or black or red sometimes you may see some cars which has more than one color on the roof you have some color the body will have another color do you do you get my point so when i say color of the car it can be black and red you you get my point some cars will have more than one color sometimes two colors sometimes three colors so when i say color of the car i need to mention the red and then green and then another one you are on two colors means what are the two colors so that is multi-valued attribute you you get my point what i'm trying to say this is not a division this is not composite composite is different multi-valued is different multi-valued means the value of the attribute is more okay that is multi-value but composite means you can divide it into three name name can be divided into three first name middle name last name okay do you get my point it's not that multi-value name is a multi-valued no 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 we have only one name but that value that name can be divided like my name is kavita ganesan it can be divided into two first name last name can you get the idea so there is a difference composite and then multi-valued don't confuse simple and single simple value cannot be divided okay that is the one and only single means this is the one value of for that attribute no other com, no other continuation of value okay and the next type of the attribute is stored derived okay uh, this is uh, this is what you mean by that okay for example you have a table uh, let's look into the same student table uh, add one more column uh, maybe here add a column what column I add? Just one more column I add here. Uh, date of birth. So this is date of birth. Now, I try to add one more column. This is what you call age. So this is the student data. We have a student data and I record the ID number, name, etc 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 including the date of birth i need to know the date of birth when i know the date of birth can i able to calculate the age the present age it's easy is it subtract to today's date minus date of birth so i can able to calculate something from the stored value that is called derived derived you get the idea everybody what do you mean by derived it is derived uh, derived or derivable from some other attribute so it is called derived attribute the value value i'm talking about the value the value for the age can be derived from other attribute so age is a derived attribute so the other other attributes for example id number date of birth address they are all stored okay then so which whose value is given that is stored whose value will be calculated from the existing attribute that is derived is it fine everybody so this is about the three main types of um what do you call types of attributes simple composite single valued multi-valued stored derived now let's keep it in mind when i say a table with some values don't expect values for each column 
Uh, how about stored? Stored is the one you have the value. You are already assigned a value. Like ID number is given. So ID number, ID is a stored attribute. Name, it's given. Stored attribute. Derived means the user don't have to give the age. We can calculate the age. Okay. So date of birth is a stored. Age is a derived. Um, like address is stored. Okay. Stored means the value is given. Derived means value is not given. It can be calculated or derived from the stored attribute. Okay. Is it, is it fine? Okay then. Now let's move on to. Um, oh yeah. Okay then. So what we will do. We will still continue the attributes after the break. So now it is 15. Can we start 3.30? Stored is given. Yes, the value of the stored attribute is given. Value of the derived attribute is not given. It's calculated. Okay. That is the idea. Value of the stored is given. Value of the derived is not given. It's calculated. Okay, fine. So what we can do is it's nearly 3.15. We will come back 3.30. Okay, 15 minutes. I guess this is this is enough, is it? And at the end, we will have a, a, another break at the end. Okay, fine. So, we will stop here. Continue at 3.30.
okay we will continue the types of attributes so as i discussed already you know already simple and composite and then multi valued um as i said here the example the color of the car okay this is ah yeah another example can you see here multi valued previous degree of a student maybe the student may have some previous already already graduated maybe with a other university another degree maybe post graduate higher you know undergraduate whatever whatever okay so this is the example of the um attributes now this is the composite in general composite and multi -val multi valued attributes are nested arbitrarily to any number of levels like previous degree is composite meaning is nested means what one inside another can you see one example previous degree of a student is a composite multi valued attribute what do you mean you know how do we write the uh, degrees we write, we say that bachelor degree bsc or uh, master degree msc we don't say only that we say the college year and then the degree and then the specialization fine so it previous degree college year degree field can you get the idea so it is a every degree is a combination of like jic this year master uh, computer science another she may have multiple degrees because it's multi valued multiple degrees so juc degree and then the uh, specialization comma many other values can you get the idea so the value contains composite and there are many values many values that to composite value so we can say composite multi valued attributes this is one example okay it can be two together why not okay then now let's see the composite attribute few minutes ago i gave you an example of address let's look into address address can be street address city state zip maybe country also and when you see the street address street address contains the number of the street name of the street and then the apartment number okay fine so this is a composite attribute it contains another composite attribute so we call it hierarchy a composite attribute inside another composite attribute so hierarchy of composite attributes possible and now entity type and key attribute so what do you mean by key attribute few minutes ago i mentioned about the key key means it needs to be unique no repetition can you get the idea for example um employee and project i say that ssn number is a key attribute that means every employee has a unique uh unique id number employee social security number and then the project project may have a name okay that is a key attribute so what do you mean by key attribute let's see project name and project number okay the department name department number they are the key attributes okay fine so attribute of an entity type for which each entry sorry entity must have a unique value that is called key attribute of that entity okay one example is given we always say this example okay a key attribute may also be a composite do you remember composite composite means attribute value can be broken into pieces broken means divided into pieces so a key attribute can be a composite attribute because it can be divided into sub parts for example vehicle tag number let's say this is a key attribute what this vehicle tag number contains it contains the number and the state uh, by the way this is the style used in america usa okay then maybe here it will be a different 
okay it, it differs from country to country so vehicle tag number it is a key attribute but it's a composite it contains two it's broken into two number and the state okay then so this is one example ah another is a key don't think that only one attribute has to be a key attribute not necessarily you can have more than one attribute as a key that is possible okay for example if you are talking about a table car you can have two key attributes one is the vehicle tag number and another one is the identification number okay then the in vehicle identification number vehicle tag number and then the identification number okay then so two key attributes so now we are going to see how to uh, put the conceptual design in a diagram which is er diagram so in this diagram we are going to use some notations keep it in mind when i list the attributes i will make it differentiate that this is a key attribute how i will underline that name when i write the name i will underline the name if i underline the name of an attribute like ssn number if i underline it you can easily understand oh this is a key attribute if a attribute name is not underlined that is a normal attribute not a key attribute okay if it is underlined it is a key attribute so keep it in mind when you are drawing a diagram er diagram you need to underline the key attribute okay okay uh, this is talking about relational schema that is chapter 5 now entity set so let's look into entity set collection of entities that is what you call entity set collection of entities or else you can call it as a entity collection okay then so where is the example let me look into show me an example okay. yeah sorry here can you look into the specific entities here car is a table ah this is the way we are going to represent i will mention the notations after a while just look into the entity set diagram b where is the diagram b? yeah diagram b it is an entity set with three entities can you get the idea these are the specific entity car one car two car three car one is about the ford and then car two for nizar maybe car three for uh, chrysler i don't know okay so this is the entity set three entities entity set with three entities okay fine uh, let's go back so entity set is a collection of three entities you can go to a table the figure just now i shown there it contains three instances of car entity three instances okay then so the name car used to refer to both the entity type and then the entity set like the entity name of the entity is car and then the entity set is also car okay so the same table name is used uh, but entity type and then entity set will have a different like for example the table name is car but when you are talking about instances i'm going to say car 1 car 2 car 3 car 4 car 5 okay can you get the idea and the values are like nissan this 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 and then toyota this 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 that is the values okay then so entity set is a current state of entity of that type stored in the database maybe at, at this moment this is the entity set maybe tomorrow the set will be different because i will update the records is it so ah uh, yeah sure no problem uh, okay so this is about the entity set collection of entities that is the entity set or else you can call it as a entity collection entity set or entity collection fine okay so when i say then the entity type is car how i'm going to refer the 
the entity uh, set like car1 car2 car3 collection of three instances three car instances okay fine now let's look into some other examples um later i will come to the diagram and then i will show you now we will move on to the value set while you what, what do you mean by value set it specifies the set of values associated with the attribute what do you mean by specifies this set of values like for example if you are going to write an id number id number has to be 10 digits is it or if you are writing a phone number phone number i need to have only 10 digits for the phone number i can't type more or less uh, if you are writing a date can you see that the format here two digits for the month then iphone two digits for the date i mean day iphone four digits i mean four places for the year something like that can you get the idea so this is what you call a uh, value set okay set of values associated with the attributes for that particular attribute okay then so value set or uh, you can even say it's a data type like when you are talking about id number it's a numeric data type when you are talking about the date it's a date type you know in java we have the date type it goes with the day month year so this is a date type and last name it is a text numeric sorry uh, alphabetic type something like that okay so you can even say value set is similar to the data type like integer character string date boolean okay so i don't know not the possible set of values i'm not talking about the possible set of values the type of values with the structure structure means how it look like a uh, format for example i need to have only two places two digits or two characters okay that two character something like that type with the format okay so let's look into the mathematical formula for the attributes and then the uh, value set. So for example, here the terms are used A, E, P, B. V is the value set. E is the entity type. A is the attribute. So when I say an attribute of an entity type E, so the value set will be a power P, B. I say that P of B. What does it mean? power set of v when i say power set it means all possible subsets of the value okay so the definition covers may be a simple or multi-valued attributes okay then so this is about the attributes and then value set just keep it in mind value set means i'm referring the data type with format okay Okay, then now let's move on to the diagram. I say that this is this chapter is talking about conceptual schema design. So what are you going to do? You are going to design a ER diagram. You can call it as ER model. So we know that what is entity, what is attribute, what is the types of attribute and then some other definitions we come to know. So how are we going to represent the entity? in this entity relationship diagram there is a symbol you need to follow the symbol okay this symbol for this representation so this represents this item can you get the idea so you need to uh, strictly follow the symbol so entity are displayed in a rectangular box not a square rectangular box so rectangular represents entity how about attributes attributes will be represented in oval the shape for attribute is oval not a circle oval okay fine each attribute is connected to the entity type so when you when you draw the um, entity and when you draw the oval you need to join them by a line you need to put a line it should not be hanging you know uh, anonymously you need to connect them okay so each attribute is connected to the entity type I say there are different types of attributes like key attribute, multi-valued attribute and then composite attribute. So there should be a difference in the diagram. 
So components of the composite attributes are connected to the oval representing the composite. So oval is connected to another oval. That is composite. I'll show one example in few minutes. And the next two slides, one minute. Key attribute. Few minutes ago I mentioned if this attribute is a key, like SSN, is a key attribute, underline. You have to underline. Okay. Multi-valued attribute. I say oval for the attribute, is it? The symbol. Multi-valued means double oval. So you you the border will be double border. The oval will have double border, double line. Okay, fine. So what are the other symbols we are going to use? Let's see those symbols here. Mm, rectangular for entity. Can you see double border for the rectangle? Single border means normal entity. Double border means weak entity. What do you mean by weak entity? An entity doesn't have a key, then that's a weak entity. Sometimes the table doesn't have a key attribute. You know, key attribute means it needs to have a unique key, unique values. Sometimes you may not have, the table may not have any attributes with unique. It's all repeated, repeated, duplicated. So there is no such key attribute. Doesn't matter. That table is called weak entity. Okay. Ah, for relationship, diamond symbol. And this is the interlining relationship. We are not going to discuss this one. But anyway, let's, let's uh, keep it in mind. This symbol also. Okay. Another is like oval for attribute. When you have underlined the name of the uh, attribute, then it's a key attribute. When you have a double border for the oval, it's multi-valued attribute. And this is the one composite. Do you remember I told you oval connected to the oval is composite. What do you mean? Let's say this oval is representing name. It is divided into three. It can be divided into three. First name, last name, middle name, or whatever. I don't know. Can you get the idea? This is composite. In, uh, yeah, we I will discuss the relationship in the next slide. And now let's move on to derived attribute. Do you remember age is a derived attribute? It's not given. You calculate. So the oval will be having dotted or dashed uh, border. Okay. Ah, this is about the relationship. When I discuss the relationship, you will able to understand. Uh, so now I will leave it. I will come back later for this last three. Moreover, the relationship even I did not mention. So let's go to the relationship. Ah, the, before going to the relationship. Ah, the, before going to the relationship, let's look into uh, entity. Few minutes ago, we saw car is an entity. These are all the attributes. Can you see the attributes? Registration, uh, vehicle ID number, model, make, color, and then uh, who's this? Year. Uh, see, registration can be divided into two, state and the number. So can you see? This is understandable. Composite. Composite means it can be divided into subparts. So this attribute can be divided into sub part and this registration is a key. Can you see and it's underlined? Vehicle ID is also a key. No problem. A table can have more than one key attribute. No problem. Okay. So here two key attributes. This is model. This is year. This is make. And can you see color double border? Because multiple values, it can have, not compulsorily, but it can have multiple values. Okay, for example, can you see here, first instance for Ford, Mustang, red and black. Car 2, only one color, blue. It's okay. It can have one, one value or more than one. And then car 3, two, two values for the color. Is that fine? These are the instances. Okay. Keep it in mind when you are writing the instance. Here, 
it is the entity type okay this is the entity set set this is entity type okay this is the notation i'm going to use it in the er diagram but this is the entity type and this is the entity set when you are writing the set with actual values these are the actual values by the way three instances of the car with actual values keep it in mind you you list the attributes with comma 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 can you see comma comma so this is for the registration vehicle id model and then make and then year and then color when you see color is a multi valued it's given in the braces you see the braces everybody and this is a composite you put it in a bracket okay ah we follow the order given in the table but the table is not at created you just go in your own sequence no problem the sequence you can go in any sequence but when you are writing it separate the attributes with comma 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 composite comes in the bracket it's, don't call it bracket parenthesis composite comes in parenthesis multi value comes in braces you know in java we use braces so is it fine so this is the entity type this is the set entity set so when you are listing the entity set you need to mention the composite attributes inside the parenthesis and then multi valued attributes inside the braces okay the whole list comes in the parenthesis can you see whole thing is come inside the parenthesis okay fine so these are the symbols you need to remember when you are drawing also when you are writing the set also okay fine now let's go back to the company database ignore the car just go back to the company database department project employee dependent these are the four entities you can find in a company database you can find more uh, we don't have time to discuss more let's stick to the four okay so the conceptual design of the company database in the er diagram is given here ah uh, it's not at given because we need to connect them let's see first this is department entity uh name is the key attribute number name and number are unique manager start date of the manager locations locations sometimes the department may have branches one in jubail one in kobar so locations it is a multi valued attribute this is project two key attributes name and number location and then controlling department okay why this location is not multi valued any idea i say the department multi valued location why this location is not multi valued it is yeah it's it don't say it's unique when there is a project going on project runs in a one particular location am i right we refer the project in, like the project in dubai the project in dhamam same project can't be here and there you get my point but the same department exists here and there one example our computer science department we have it in female branch we have it in male branch the department is computer science but one in the female branch one in the male branch so two locations of the same department when i say project all the location work for the same project so the location will be one particular location can you get the idea so don't confuse why the location is uh, multi valued here single valued here okay employee oh my god can you see a lot of lot of attributes for the employee you see the key attribute you see the multi valued attribute and then composite oh yeah here can you see multi valued plus composite 
it's possible we already saw this in one previous slide is it multi valued composite attribute and the department sorry dependent ah can you see the dependent any anything you noticed here for the dependent anybody can tell me something you can notice it's there here it's there here it's there here not here what is not here i'm not talking about the composite no 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 i'm not talking about the multi valued uh, number what do you mean by number a uh, key yeah there is no key here i see a key here i see a key here a key here but there is no key here few minutes ago i mentioned that weak entity or not a attribute weak entity where is it uh, somewhere yeah when the entity doesn't have a key it's a weak entity keep it in mind okay so that has to be come it has to come with a double double border it's missed here it should come in a double border keep it in mind because it's a weak entity okay weak entity means the entity doesn't have a key attribute that is the weak entity okay then university sorry it's not university company database and we figure out four entities employee project department and then dependent and now we need to connect these four entities together connecting the entity is by the relationship okay that is what you call relationship okay the relationship connects the entity with another entity okay so er model has three concepts we have entities we have attribute we have relations until now we saw only entity and attribute i didn't see show you the relationship let's look into the relationship what do you mean by relationship the entities are related to each other by some terms is it that is what you call relationship okay it relates two or more entities with some meaning for example i can say employee works for a department works for that is a relationship so employee works on a project on a project so working on a project that is the relationship employee has a dependent you know dependent means family member is it so employee has a dependent has has that is the relationship can you get the idea so there are many many relationship you can figure out uh i i'll show you my many other many other relationship later so relationship relates two or more distinct entities with some meaning specific meaning for example employee works on a project and i some some project maybe project x y a uh, employee manages some department okay uh so relationship of the same type are grouped and typed into relationship type so do you remember previously we have the entity type now we have relationship type so all the same type are related and they are grouped as relationship type for example works on it is a relationship type uh works for it is a relationship type and then managers employee managers a department managers so another type okay fine and then keep it in mind we have some degree of the relationship type what do you mean by degree if you are connecting the relationship if the relationship connects two different entities the degree is two okay for example employee manages department employee manages department manages this is the relationship who are the entity employee and department how many entities are there two 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 so the degree is two sometimes we may have degree 3 okay what do you mean by degree 3 the relationship connects three entities that's also possible 
um, we can have one example for example uh, let's go to One minute, let me open the whiteboard. Okay, so uh, let me clean this. Okay, so what is the um, degree if two entities are related by one relationship, that's what you call degree two, the relationship of degree two, degree of the, the, the degree of this relationship is 2. Sometimes the same relationship can connect 3 entities. So in that case, we can say the degree is 3. For example, I didn't teach you how to draw the diagram. So anyways, I will, I will just try my best. So when I say... Uh, why I cannot write? Ah, uh, yeah. So let's assume supply is the, okay, spelling mistake. So let's say this is a relationship. Relationship will be, uh, will be represented using the symbol, di, uh, diamond symbol, okay. So we can have a entity, let's say supplier. Supplier is connected. And then part is connected and then project. Let's let's I will I will draw first and then explain. Sometimes we can have one relationship between the two entities. Okay, for example, let me draw uh, employee is one entity, another entity is department. And the relationship is managers. So employee manages the department. Oh, I didn't draw properly. It's managers. So employee manages the department. So this is the relationship. The degree is 2. Why 2? There are two entities in the participating relationship. Okay. Then there are two entities participating in the relationship. Employee manages the department. Okay. There got some relationship which may have three entities participating. What are the three entities? Supplier, part, project. So supplier supplies the parts to the project. How to read? Supplier supplies part to the project. This is what you need to do, uh, read. How to read? Supplier supplies the part to the project. So, how many entities are participating in this relationship? Three entities are participating. So, the degree is 3. Keep it in mind. Degree of a relationship. What is the degree of relationship? You have a relationship. Identify how many entities are participating in the relationship. Maybe two entities are participating or three entities are participating. When you have two entities participating in a relationship, that is called binary. Sorry. Binary means two. When there are three entities participating in the relationship, it's called trinary. No, spelling, yeah. Trinary, okay. Two entities participating in the relationship, degree is true, and it's called 
you binary relationship three entities are participating in the relationship degree is three and the relationship is called trinary relationship trinary okay binary trinary okay fine you get the idea what do you mean by degree what do you mean by the binary trinary okay so let's look into some other examples i'll go back to the slides uh, wait a second that it takes time Yeah, so this is about relationship and the degree. So the degree, it's it's the degree of the relationship type is the number of participating entities. How many entities are participating? So employee managers a department. So that means two entities. So it's called binary relationship. Binary. Keep it in mind. Trinary is not given here, but it's there in the textbook okay then so make a note of the trinary please so sometimes they've got some terms you may not have it but i will remind you now in the class so you can note down okay then so this is the instances instances like instances means a few minutes few minutes ago i show you the instance uh, like a car instance, what do you mean by car instance? Like Nissan and then the, the set. Do you remember the set, entity set, Nissan, Ford, etc., etc.? Yeah. So I assume that these are the instances. It's too long. Do you remember the entity set? It's too long. So just keep it in mind. So E1, E2, E3 are the instances for employee, and this is for the relationship, this is for the department. So, can you understand from the diagram, E1 works for department 1. Okay, and E2 works for another department. This is D2, for example. And can you see, E6 works for the same department 1. It's okay. Many employees work in the same department. I say, one employee can't work in more than one department. But, many employees can work in same department. You get my point? Same employee can't work in different department. Okay. So this is how the instances of the relationship you can able to understand. Um, ah, here, few minutes ago I told you uh, an employee can work in many projects. Why not? I can work in this project, that project. So can you see the instance E2? E2 works in project 1. E2 also works in project 4. And can you see E3? Oh my God, three projects. He works in P2, P3, P4. It's, it's possible. An employee works on many projects, but an employee works for one department. Okay, that is the previous slide. You can understand the relationship. That's what this is shown here. This is not the diagram. This is not entity relationship diagram. Okay. This is a diagram showing the relationship, the instances, instances of the relationship. Okay, can you see here the relationship is end to end, many to many. Okay, I will, I will, I will explain this later on. And now, the type relationship, type relationship set, the description of the relationship. That is the type. It identifies the name and the participating entities like here, here. The relationship type I mentioned here. Uh, yeah, can you see? Managers. This is the relationship. The participating entities are employee and the department. It's written. Yeah, can you see? Um, works for the project. Yeah, works on is a relationship. Participating entities are employee and project. That is relationship type. It shows the relationship and the participating entities. So the relationship is work on, 
participating entity is employee and project. So this is the relationship type. Set means current set of relationship instances in the database. That is the current state of relationship type. This is the current state of relationship type. The instances. You all see the instance. E1 works on this project. E4 works on some projects. So this is state, current state. That is the relationship set. Why I say current state? Tomorrow it can change. The next hour it can change. The E1 employee may withdraw from this project. He may join P4. Why not? It's possible. Okay. Can you get the idea? So this is the current state. The set contains the current state. Okay then. So relationship type, relationship set. So each instance in the set relates individual participating entities. Keep that point in mind. So the instance, each instance relates individual entity. So this particular employee works on this particular project. Okay, actually I should write the entity set. Do you remember the entity set? It contains the long sentence values, values, values. Kama, 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 the long sentence. Uh, we can't write the whole sentence, no space. That's what short notation. E1, E2, E3, E4, P1, P2, P3, P4, it's given. Okay, so this particular employee, like John Smith works on uh, project X. Maybe then James works on project Y. Can you understand that? Each instance. Okay. So set relationship contains each instance. So this is what mentioned here. Each instance in the set relates individual participating entities. Okay then. So ER diagram, how are you going to represent the relationship? Few minutes ago, I even show you a, a simple example ER diagram with the relationship. So diamond shape. So relationship you are going to put it in the notation diamond shape. Okay. Connected to the participating entity. Just connect with the straight lines. Enough. No particular uh, technique. Just to connect. Few minutes ago I, I, I was connecting the entity with the relationship. Just a line. The relationship type is not shown on the arrow. Normally we don't write it. We put a the relationship has a name that you write it inside the diamond symbol. Okay inside the diamond symbol how are you going to read the relationship from left to right top to bottom what do you mean by left to right top to bottom let me give you an example i'll jump to uh, this is basically a er diagram how a er diagram looks like okay don't don't uh, think that it's complex it's a very simple diagram but it has too many details. But anyway, it's nothing to worry. It's very simple diagram. All the details will be given. You just put it in a diagram. That's it. Okay. Uh, we, will, we will see this later. I just want you to uh, show you how to read. How to read the entity relationship diagram. Can you see the rectangle? Employee is an entity. Department is an entity. Project. Ah, do you see the dependent? Double border. Weak entity. Weak entity means double border. Is it? Okay. So, can you see the relationship, the diamond symbol? How to read it? Department works for employee? No, 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 no. Just now I told you, you need to read from left to right, top to bottom. Keep it in mind. Left to right, top to bottom. Okay. So, for example, employee. Wait a second. How to read? Employee works for department. Am I right? Left to right. Try to read from left to right. Employee manages department. Okay. And then top to bottom. One example. You see the projects. Projects are under the department. Is it? So can you see here? Department controls projects. 
Am I right? So keep it in mind when you're reading the uh, entity relationship diagram, you're supposed to draw in a way that I should read from left to right, top to bottom. Okay. This is not necessarily that employee should be left hand side and only department on the on the right. No, no, no. I can put the department down here. So employee works for the dep I can draw like this also. You can draw it in any way, but don't change the meaning. I will be reading from top to bottom or from left to right. That is the one and only criteria. So you can draw in a way employee here works for here department down here. Why not? And then from the department controls project. Why not? So you can draw this way. I don't mind. Okay. Then there is no particular thing that you need to put this that no, 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 no. Only thing is after you finish the drawing. When you want to read it, you should read from left to right. Or uh, the diagram can be read from top to bottom. That is the meaning. Okay. So why I come here, I want to show you this. The relationship type is not shown in arrow. There is no arrow. When you have arrow, you can follow the arrow. But I'm not going to put any arrow in my diagram. Few minutes ago, I said, you connect the entity with lines, lines, lines. Lines means just a line, no arrow head. So when there is no arrow, what is the direction? So follow the direction. It should be readable from left to right or top to bottom. As there is no arrow, follow this instruction. The diagram doesn't have arrows, only lines and then Square, not square, rectangle, oval, diamond. This is the symbols we are going to use. Rectangle for entity, oval for attribute, diamond for relationship, lines for the connection. That's it, four symbols only. Sometimes you have double border, dashed border. That differs, type, type. Okay. Okay, then. Now, this is the, uh, the um, company database. This is the entities. This is the relationship. Can you see the relationship works for? Employee works for the department. Manages. Employee manages the department. Controls. Department controls the project. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, works on. Works for is different. Works on a different. Employee works on a project. Am I right? Supervision. Uh, this one I will I will tell you after a while because this is unary. What do you mean by unary? Same entity is participating in the relationship. What do you mean by that? Only one entity participating in the relationship. Can you see? Employee supervise another employee. So only one entity. Who is this? Employee participates in the relationship this type of relationship is called unary relationship so we have now three types unary binary trinary unary means degree one binary is degree two trinary means degree three what do you mean by degree any idea what do you mean by degree anybody can tell me entity number of entities participating in the relationship Super. Okay. M number of entities participating in the relationship. Okay. So this example, let me show you. Supervise in the diagram. Only one entity. Oh, yeah. There is one more relationship. I didn't say. Dependence of employee. Dependence of dependent. Okay. Employee dependence of dependent. Okay. Can you see employee dependence of dependent? Why this is also double border? Because the connecting entity is a weak entity. So the relationship becomes weak relationship. Whenever double border, keep it in mind. Okay. I'll, I will, I will, I uh, will, I will explain this in, in later on. Okay. Keep this one for later classes. Maybe next class. I will explain. This goes with the weak entity. I'll explain later. Now, I want to show you the unary. Unary is degree 2. Employee works for the... Uh, sorry, unary is degree 1. I'm sorry. Binary is degree 2. Yeah. Employee works for the department, degree 2. 
employee manages degree two. So they are all degree two. Degree one, can you see here? Employee supervises another employee. Why like this? Okay, imagine uh, we have CS department. We have a chairperson. So chairperson supervises the department. I mean, supervises the employees of the department. Is it? There is, a, there is somebody supervises the employees. Basically, the chairperson is also an employee. Can you get the idea? So, an employee supervises the remaining employees. You get my point? So, entity is the same. Only one entity participating in the relationship. Can you see the one entity? Employee is a supervisor of another employee. So, you can read it. Employee is a supervisor of an employee. Something like that. Can you get the idea? Uh, here, as it is unary, you can have this way also. Employee is a supervisee of an employee. Supervisee means subordinate. Supervisor means superior. You know, one on the top, like manager is superior. One on the below in the hierarchical diagram, you know, organization chart. The one on the top is supervisor. One on the bottom is supervisee down next level lower level okay fine so this is an entity relationship diagram you see everything in one no worries we will have exercises i'll give you scenario just try to read the scenario identify the entities identify the relationship and attributes and put them in a diagram that is exercise in the next class now let's see the practical the theoretical concepts only. Okay then. So the relationship type, you know already manager manages the department, works on, works for. Uh, okay then. So this is the relationship managers, works on, works for. So this is in diamond symbol and then entities are in the rectangle symbol. Attributes are in the oval symbol. Attributes. Okay, then. Okay, anything else like uh, managers works for distant. Ah, yeah. More than one relationship can exist between the same entity. Why not? We have example here. Employee department. Okay, then. The two entities. Employee department. In between, do I have only one relationship? No, no, I can have many relationships. Between the same entity, I can have more than one relationship. For example, employee works for department. Why not? Employee manages a department. One of the employee. Do you see the supervisor is one of the employee, by the way? So employee, man, employee means not everybody is going to manage. Keep it in mind. One employee... I put a number here. Can you see the number? One employee manages one department. Can you see the number? N employee works for one department. I'll, I'll teach you this number in the next slides. Okay. Don't think all the employee will manage the department. No, 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 no. One employee manages one department. Okay. So between the two entities, there can be many relationships. It's possible. So you have example. But it has a different meaning. The meaning of the relationship is different. One relationship works for. Another relationship manages. It's, they are two different. Okay. Keep it in mind. Constraints. Few minutes ago I was telling that there is a number. One N. Something like that. So that is what you call cardinality, cardinality ratio. That is specifies maximum participation. What is, what is the term? The term is called cardinality ratio. Keep it in mind, cardinality ratio. Okay then. So how many possible uh, ratios are available? One to one, one to many. Many to one, many to many. So one means I will... I will use the number one 
many means i will rule uh, i will use many means i don't know is it 5 6 20 30 nobody knows it differs so let me use a um, variable n m uh, whatever okay so basically let's use n and m okay then because we don't know how many how many if you know how many you can put that number like 1 to 5 1 to 10 or 1 to 25 I don't know the number, so just use a variable n maybe, m maybe, whatever is it. So 1 to 1, this is 1 to 1 ratio, this is 1 to many, this is many to 1, this is many to many. This is about cardinality ratio, this is one of the constraint, constraint for the relationship. Go back to the diagram, cardinality ratio, you see it. Uh, many employees, because it's n, many employees works for one department, n to 1. Mean many to one. Here, one employee manages one department, one to one. One department controls many projects, one to many. Here, this is one to many relationship. One employee supervise one employee supervises employee. So one to many. One employee supervises many employees. One to many. Okay. Um, ah, those double lines I will explain later. Now, step by step, we will go. Okay, we can't see all in one. We say we saw some symbols like notations rectangle means what, uh, oval means what, diamond means what, and then the uh, double border means what. So, we saw some terms. Now, I am talking about the cardinality. Later, I will talk about the other symbols used in this diagram. Okay, then. So, now cardinality ratio, try to understand the cardinality ratio. 1 to 1, 1 to many, many to 1, many to many. This is the four ratios. What else? Dependency. What else? Dependency. What do you call dependency? Uh, which is... Uh, it talks about minimum participation. See, when the relationship talks about maximum participation, where is it? It's here. When the relationship talks about maximum participation, that's cardinality ratio. When the relationship talks about minimum participation, that's called dependency. What is existence dependency? Okay. Or you can call it as a participation constraint. Okay, then existence dependency. So you need to know what do you mean by cardinality ratio? What do you mean by dependence? Existence dependency. One talk about maximum participation. Another one talk about minimum participation. Okay, fine. Uh, what do you mean by that minimum participation is uh, minimum cardinality constraint. Okay, it can be total participation or Zero participation. Okay. So, it, it, it is of two type. Partial participation. Uh, sorry, it's not zero. It can be zero or optional. Okay, fine. Total participation. Partial participation. When I say total participation, every entity in the set must be related to the other entity. Total part participation means everybody in the set Related to other entity. That is total participation. Okay. For example, employee works for a department. Where is the diagram? Let's go to the diagram. Employee works for the department. All the employee works for the department. So total, total. If the company has 20 employees, all the 20 employee participate in the relationship. You get my point? All the 20. I can't have an employee not assigned to a department. No, 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 no. We can't have that. When you have an employee, he is assigned to a particular department. How can you have an employee have, having no department? He doesn't work for a department. How? It's possible. You, you get my point? So everybody, everybody is related to a department. So that is total participation. Okay, then. So that is what you call um what do you mean by the total participation 
um, maximum, sorry, minimum uh, cardinality constraint. Can you get the idea? So the participation employee in the works for is total. So that's why, can you see that line, double line, total participation? You, you get the idea, everybody? Uh, okay. So this is the symbol for total participation. Must participate in the relationship. So that's what it's called as, uh, so it's, it's represented in double line. Okay, fine. So another one is partial participation. Partial. Partial means what? Optional. So when I say partial participation, some are part of the set of the employee, for example, related to some department via managers, but not necessarily. Can you get the idea? Partial. Some of the employee participate in this managers. So it's partial dependency, partial. Can you get the idea? So that's what you have an employee and managers, managers, you have the uh, line here, double line here, but not here. So this is partial participation. What do you mean by partial participation? Not all the employee is managing. You get my point? Only one employee is managing. Only one minimum, minimum one employee is managing. Not all the employees are managing the department. You get my point? So that's what I didn't put a double line here. If I put a double line, meaning is different. All the employees are managing the department. Am I right? So no double line here. There is a double line here. So this comes under partial. Okay. One other example. Employee works on a project. Am I right? Employee works on a project. What do you mean? When you have an employee, compulsorily they are participating in a project. I can't have an employee saying, oh, no, 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 I can't participate in that project. No, 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 no. Employees are involved in any project. Maybe one project, two project. I don't know. Whatever. Depends. So can you see the full participation? Employee works on the project. But employee manages department. I can't expect everybody participate in the, sorry, everybody manage in the uh, department. No, it's, it's uh, not logically correct. There will be only one manager. Not everybody is a manager. One other example. Can you see another weak entity dependent? What do you mean by dependent? This table contains the family members of the employee. By the way, we can't expect that employee will have members. Can you get the idea? So that's what it's a partial dependency. Can you get the idea? Some employee will have family members. Some may not. So partial entity. So there is one example for the partial. So partial relationship. Okay. So there is partial relationship. Ah, Where do you put the double line? You need to be very careful. Don't put the double line here for the partial, partial. When I say partial relationship or partial, uh, um, you know, uh, de dependency constraint, don't put the double line here, double line here. Somebody is managing the department for sure. There is a participation. Somebody is participating in this. So there is somebody participating for the managing. Okay. But don't put the double line here single line here okay all employees managers no 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 so you need to be very uh, very uh, careful in drawing the partial relationship okay dependency relationship can you get the idea so the relationship type can be full pa total participation or partial participation okay then so total participation means all the all the instance in the entity table are participating in the relationship. Partial uh, participation means maybe some or nobody, maybe zero or maybe some participate in the relationship. Okay, then uh, single employee managers or some employee managers sometimes... Oh, ER in managers, single employee managers. 
but here in the employee dependence some employee will have dependence can you get the not all employees have dependence okay some employee have dependence um, some employee may not have okay fine some employee manages the department some may not manage the others okay fine so this is about the relationship type okay then so we now see how to represent the entity with attributes how to represent the relationship and how to connect them okay then so these are all the things we saw here uh, we saw this one and this is the one to one many to one many to many relationship i already gave one example before okay this kind of thing we already discussed and even mentioned that is it one to one one to many this is many to many okay many employees can work for many projects so this is many to many we already saw this one okay then so what we can do can we start this recursive relationship type from next class okay 